Yeah, yeah, you're listening to the sultry sounds of Moby Dick on your station, Q1911. Let's talk about your beginning, your inspirations to do music, and um, what singers, as, as a child growing up, had an effect on you listening to growing up with your parents. You know, I'm sure they were playing music and you hearing things. What actually just made you, it hit you like this, I love music, this is what I want to do. Um, talk about your background and, and how you actually got into music. Well, first of all, my, uh, my, da- my grandfather was a um, musician. He was a, um, he was a church, he was a, uh, what he thought the minister of music at our family church. I was in Mount Pearson Baptist Church um, in Morgan City, Louisiana. And um, my uncles, they both played instruments. And my my mother and her sisters, they all sang in the choir. I was still, you know, I come from pretty much a musical background. And uh, also, you know, influences would be like Michael Jackson, Ray Charles, uh, Stevie Wonder, Bob Marley. Uh, I mean, I can just go on and on, but that's just few off the top of the head. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, they, they, they really, you know, shaped my mind into my appreciation for music itself and especially soul music, you know, yeah. from the black the uh, black experience, you know what I'm saying? Definitely. You know, because, you know, we can relate to the music, you know, basically like um, the talking drum, you know what I'm saying? So it was just, it was just the, the black experience and the music to go with it, you know, and the, the rich history and heritage and culture that comes with it. That's, that's who really shaped Moby Dick, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, because I, I mean, I can definitely, with the people that you've named and even others that you did name, I can hear those influences in your music, especially in your solo albums, because I mean, you hit different ranges and you and you touch on all types of things. Like you can sing about anything, you know. And that's the thing about a great artist is the fact that they can touch on anything and you feel it coming from them, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's all, it's all about the experience, man. I just express what I feel, what I witness. You know what I um, going through at the time. You know what I've been through. Or, you know, it just it just I see that just I, I consider myself more or less um, expressing this, and you know, via the talents that God gave me. You know, what I'm saying I praise you to God. Uh, you know, with the the gift of music, you know, being able to play instruments and be able to play by ear. Whatever I hear, I'm, I could just, you know, play it on the keyboard, the drum machine, sing it, you know what I'm yeah, saying, whatever. Definitely. You know, but, plus, you know, I was on top of that, man, you know, I was blessed to uh, be pushed by my parents, you know, to uh, school, because they, they, um, they, they required that me and my sister get up and go to school every morning and that we were healthy, you know what I'm saying? We didn't think we had to go to school. Definitely. So, you know what I'm saying? So with, with that, we're going to school and being, you know, with, with my education is, um, experience, you know what I'm saying? I was um, in, participating in curricular, extracurricular activities like band, basketball, you know, you know, you know, in the, in the earlier years, you know, you know, when you're young, you sing in the choir, you have this, that talent as well. Yeah. You know, and also I sang, you know, sang in the church. And um, when I got older, I played in, played organ in the church and became a uh, choir director and all that, a minister of music. And also through college, I, I played at Marston Southern University Band. So I'm a very lot of musician outside, you know. Putting, pushing uh, buttons and pads on a drum machine. I, I'm, I'm, I'm an actual musician. Yeah, definitely. You know I say you're southern. You swack like me because I went to Mississippi Valley State, man. So. Oh man. Yeah, I, I know. So you, um, you swack already? That's what that is. Yeah, I already know all about that, man. <laughs> Get the swack out because mm-hmm. I play ball down yeah. there. You play ball? What sport you play? Basketball. Already? That's what that is. So you went. 
you already know what the scholarship life is all about before you know you you know, you know in uh Swag, I don't know if I Mississippi Valley, but I know at the time Dr. Greg he was given scholarship, you know what I'm saying? You know, you know, through you know, Southern University. Yeah. And um I was one of the ones who got a scholarship to go to Southern, you know, and um thank God for that, you know, I played Melophone over there and I played KK Five, but I played that at another school. I transferred from some some Nickel State University. Okay. That's in Tibet or Louisiana. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. So uh yeah, and um you know, I, I went to all kinds of colleges, Wichita State, all that, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, you do. Yeah, bro. I'm a college, and, my, and I'm a Q-Dog, you know what I'm saying? Oh, okay. <laughs> and, 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 and I'm KK5, dang friend. Okay. You know what I'm That's cool, man. You definitely... you in the Valley, you definitely know about, about KK5. Yeah, I do, man. Like, I... I... I see. I, I saw all of because I didn't. Uh, I transferred from there, ended up finishing up at UT Martin. But like I said, Valley, you know, that's it's to, it's totally different experience. And you know, I, I wouldn't wouldn't trade oh, for nothing, everything, anything in the swag. You know, this that's it in itself. Matter of fact, bro, while you mention it, uh, shout out to DJ Hustle Man, which is my friend, brother. You know what I'm saying? Okay. He's a big DJ. You know, I bet in the uh, Delta area of Mississippi, yeah. and um. And also shout out to Snag and uh, um, Bill Toy and also the Little Nasty. Uh, they uh, they they played the same year that I played in 1992. And I went to Valley's homecoming. Um, it's the last homecoming, man. And thank God that, that's the second homecoming I went to. Yeah. You know, uh, at Valley. I'm saying that we had a great time. You know, we gave it spending the old great, you know, the old no limits and all that type of stuff. You know. Old cash money and, and the eight ball MJ I was took me back, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, it's nothing like a black college or HBCU homecoming. Nothing like no, it. Nothing like it. That's why everybody goes. Like you have more people there at, for that weekend that don't go there <laughs> than the people that actually went there a lot of times. Because you know everybody wants to experience it and everybody wants to be a part of it. And the good thing about it, everybody tailgating, and most of the people don't even be at the game. You know what I'm saying? They'd be by the frat benches or where the alumni would be at level, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and if they are at the game, they just stay into halftime. And then after that, after the halftime show, they back outside with everybody. Oh, yeah. Because they want to see the bands, you know. Mm-hmm. And that also, man, shaped my, the college experience, man, shaped my intellect and my social experience. Because college is, you know, a lot of people don't know, man, it's a microcosm of the world itself. It is. You know what I'm saying? And you meet people from all walks of life, from all over, man. You even have people from other countries that go to, to colleges, man. And that, you know, you know, matter of fact, speaking of the college experience, how the No Limit story, my, my fortune came to play was when, um, you know, you're from the flat, so you know about the Bayou class. Yeah, yeah. Me and my flat brothers, I was living in Wichita, Kansas at this time. And um, me and my fat brothers were, you know, every every uh, Bayou class that Thanksgiving weekend. And um, after Thanksgiving weekend, we road tripped all the way down to, uh, to Louisiana. But, you know, that, that's like an a eight-hour drive from, you know, I'm tripping. Yeah. Like a 14-hour drive from Wichita, Kansas. Yeah. Then the mid the midpoint would be Dallas, Texas, and that we would stop over there and, and sleep overnight in Dallas, and then get up the next morning and head down to New Orleans. All right. All right. So um, what happened, man? This was back in 1994. Uh, me and my brother was on our way down to, to uh, New Orleans, stopped in Dallas to pick up some other girls that were going, you know, caravan with us down there. You know, and that's how the, that's how the buzz do it. That's how the kids do it. Yeah. And uh, then anyway, we um we stopped in Dallas, and two of my frat brothers that, that I knew were bouncers, and uh, Drew Pearson's club. It was called the Spot. Okay. In uh, Dallas, Texas, and um so we stopped through there, man. Went to the club, and we after after the club, we were gonna take it on to the crib. We were gonna bring some. 
some chicks coming back to the pad. You know, I, I mean, yeah. that's the college day. <laughs> you got to gotta get the chicks, bro. Definitely. But anyway, but anyway, man, we, we went in the club. We went in the club a good 10 minutes. The shots rang out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that, that. Shots rang out. So, um, so we, you know, pandemonium broke out and all that type of stuff, man. And me and my frat brother, uh, Nerd Dog, we wind up in the girls' bathroom, bro. You know what I'm saying? Ducking for cover, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So after the smoke clear, after the smoke clear, we, we heard, you know, the coast was clear that we can come out, trying to find out a little chick that got shot. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, the reason we saw that the pet paramedics over there tending to her, and after we tried to make our way out the club, Nerd Dog tapped me on the shoulder, and um, points in the direction of the DJ booming like, man, you know this? It was my cousin, you know, Master P. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, so you know, it had been like six years, you know, prior to the last time I had seen him. You know what I'm saying? Me, me the thing is, let, let, let me go um, back up a little bit more. Me and everybody know that a should know that you know in the same. You know that me P. And since we're cousins, yeah, you know what I'm saying, and the way we're kindred on our dad's side, you know what I'm saying, okay. Master P's grandfather and my daddy were brothers. Both of them are deceased now. Rest in peace, my dad Raymond Poole and um, my uncle Claudius Miller, which is our uh, P's grandfather. They are brothers. Well, that's how we kin. Okay, you know what I'm saying, and uh, they had you know recent, you know, I mean. I'm from Morgan City, Louisiana, M-O-R-G-A-N City, Louisiana, which is 80, 80 miles west, you know, approximately 80 miles west of New Orleans, off of the old Spanish trail, which everybody knows, um, Highway 90. Okay. okay. So every weekend, every other weekend, you know, we would, we would go out to uh, New Orleans or they would come to Morgan City or whatever, you know, because that's how close our family, that's how tight our family is. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, me and he go back to like sleeping in the same bed, you know what I'm saying? We we'll go, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. We we'll go to New Orleans, we'll come to Morgan City, you know, I'm just going to your project, see my people. We'll be going to play, going to the candy store and all that. So then we, we real family, 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 family. Yeah. Like Snoop and Dad, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But anyway, I hadn't seen Cuz in like. Six years, brother. You know, you know when you get when you grow older, you, you go on about your life and you, you start your life. He went to University of Houston. Yeah. So he graduated. He graduated from Warren Houston about three years after I graduated from Warren okay. Houston. That's the age difference. That's the age difference. But anyway, you know, it had been like six years since I saw Cuz, and um, he started me in the club. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, my fat brother, my fat, because you know your, you know your family anywhere. Yeah. You know I don't care. It could, it could be on the moon. It could be on, on your rain. You know what I'm saying? But you know your family when you see them. You know what I'm saying? Right. So he has spotted me. And I turn around and say, man, that's my car. That's that, that person. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then he said, I said, man, what the fuck you doing up in there? <laughs> he said, man, what the fuck you doing up in there? So I went up and went to the DJ booth. You know what I'm saying? We hardly say, Still doing music, bro? I said, man, you know, come on, bro. You already know this is me. This is what I do. Yeah. And he said, um, Cause you know I'm still I'm still doing my thing. Because matter of fact, when I'm talking about six years prior to that, it was that his brother, the the you know, the, the infamous Kevin Miller, R. I. P. Kevin Miller. Yeah. A lot of the stuff we used to do, like the rest and peace on what I did, like I miss my homies and, you know, all that type of stuff. Uh, no more tears. A lot of that stuff was based on Kevin's story. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm about? Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm About it, all that comes from Kevin. Because the, the movie you about it, saying? wasn't that kind of... Yeah, that's you know, about Kevin. That's what I thought. You know what I'm saying? And uh, rest in peace to my cousin. Yeah. So that's... So the thing is, that was the last time I had seen P prior to this incident. Okay. And then... After the incident, you know, we, of course, we, you know, changed numbers and all that. Matter of fact, he was, uh, he was, uh, promoting for the ghetto trying to, no, I think for 99 Ways to Die. 
in High for Christmas. You know, he had a little compilation called High for Christmas. Okay. You know, he, he, he had TRU himself and Cali G, King George, and um, a, a couple of other Bay Area people that was on there. I think Seaborn, I'm quoting now. It, it may, Seaborn may have been on that project. Okay. But anyway, he, and he also was promoting for Ghetto Son and Killman. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, you know, he, he had exchanged numbers. And um, me, and the, me and the brother proceeded on, you know, about our business and um, went to the body classes. And two weeks later, I was in, he had sent me a ticket to come to uh, Richmond, California. Okay. And the rest, the rest is history. Yeah, great history. You know, the, rest, the rest you want to see on a documentary. Okay. Mine, I have seen it. That's one of the projects that um, I've been working on for a couple of years. And the fans, I, I have to apologize to the fans for the hold up on it. We had to just cross some eyes and dot some T's. I mean, dot some eyes and cross some T's. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know, you know, we 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 wait for more investors to come up, come to the table and you know do their thing with it. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And uh, you know that that pretty much is that. I don't want to take up all you know do all the yapping, man. So no, you, no, no. Like I said, man, this this uh this is what people want to know. Definitely me and like I said, I got friends. That's this I this is what I listen to. We listen to everything all the time, like. I love No Limit music and everything the same way I did 15, 20 years ago because it's timeless. <laughs> and, uh, you know, even more so now because it's, it's just classic, you know. So I want to, um, you know, Beats by the Pound, then Medicine Men. Now, take me inside the studio then when you all were produced. I mean, you all produced tracks that led to millions of albums being sold. And uh, how did you, KLC, Craig, B. Odell, P, how did you all concept these albums? How did you develop the tracks for the artists? Like it seemed like every track was perfect for this artist, for this album. How did you all come up with the concepts of, okay, this is how this album's gonna sound, this is how this song gonna sound. How did you all come up with that? First of all, man, we had a, um, we had a plethora, man. I gotta say this for the record. Everybody who raps wrote their own material. It's top down. There was no ghost writers in the camp. Everybody wrote their own material. It was, you know, everybody had their own experience. You know what I'm saying? They were all poets. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Of course, all of them are all poets. You know, they were real prolific writers. Every last one of them. I'm not going to even say. That we didn't know them and didn't have any pull. You know, of course, we know about the Max, the Fiend. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The Demirs, you know, the Cain and Nables, the, the Sea Murders, you know what I'm saying? So you know, Slim. You know, Slim, of course, you know what I'm saying? Skull Duggery, you know what I'm saying? We can go on and on and on. Of course, we have a plethora, man. Yeah. And, um, you know, rest in peace to, uh, to, uh, to Max. I mean, I'm talking my man, I'm sure a piece, uh, piece to Magic and also to uh, Big Ed. Yeah. And also rest in peace to uh, Soldier Slim. You know what I'm saying? Trey A. Can, can leave out Trey A. Yeah. And like I'm saying, man, we had a lot of good talented musicians and songwriters in our camp. And um, we would be, you know, doing beats. We, we, would, we would be around the clock making beats. Me, we would take shifts. First of all, yeah. it would be me, me and uh, Craig B on one ship, uh, and they would be KL and Odell on another ship. You know what I'm saying, and we would alternate, and whoever was in while we were cooking up that dope, you know what I'm dope meaning beef. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And uh, while we were cooking it up, that's why he called it ghetto dope because you know it was like crack to everybody. You know what I'm yeah. saying? <laughs> yeah. Everybody was addicted to beef by the pound. Anyway, um, while we would be cooking it up, you know, Mac feel like if, if Mac would be working on his album, you know, you know, he would hear some music and say, I want that, I want that. You know what I'm saying? Or maybe we'd be cooking up something with them in mind and say, here, spit on this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And they would go to the pen and pad and do their thing. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Especially this, this school would take his stuff out. Okay, we would do a track, he would hear it and say, I want that one. 
and he was going to, you know, he would burn it to a cassette. You know what I'm saying? Or, because, you know, CD was not out like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you had to, you had to dub it, it on the tape, man. You had to dub it on the tape. <laughs> mm-hmm. So anyway, we would burn the beat and put it on your cassette or later on it would be CD. Um, nah, we, I'm tripping. We couldn't burn a CD in there. We just, just only burn cassettes. Yeah. So we, we, would burn, we would burn the beat on the, on the tape, right? Me, uh, Thin or either me or either uh, Jessica would take the beat to the uh, truck, go downstairs and write, smoke and write, smoke and write, you know what I'm saying? Come back. And we got a, a banger, you know what I'm saying? Right. And then we, we was, to be honest with you, man, we were in the actual five year zone and nothing but that stuff. You know, we were living life, you know, we were seeing life, we were experiencing life, and we were jamming. <laughs> yeah, Hell, I, that what we, we were doing. We were dancing, bro. Every Tuesday, something new coming out. We we dying to go get it, man. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. Every Tuesday. Mm-hmm. You gotta look at it, man. Where we at, man? In the Gulf, in the Gulf of Mexico, you know that area, man. Of the country, we had a lot of poets who sung about, and I keep I'm keep saying it was the experiment. Okay. Yeah. So the the black experience in South Louisiana, the South Mississippi, you know, in that Gulf area, you know what I'm saying, or uh, Mobile around Alabama, man, we got some rich history down there, man, so far as, you know, the um, slave trade, uh, uh, invented servants, uh, murder, uh, you know what I'm saying, all kind of stuff. And some good times to that too, man, because we know how to party. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We, Ass shaking and pussy popping come from the water. You know what I'm saying? Well, really, uh, uh, to be honest with you, it originated in Africa. Yeah. And was that you go to slave trade again. You know what I'm saying? So it's all connected. Everything. And then also the, the Moorish people who were already here. You know what I'm saying? They don't talk about that much, but the Moorish people, the, the, the people of color always had rhythm. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. And we were able to sing about the, our experiences, whether it's been on the cotton field and the sugar cane field, you know, in, in those, in, in, in the plant, on the plantation. We were always singing to keep ourselves, you know, happy and during stressful times. You know what I'm saying? Right. Because if you go back to Katrina, man, you know, how in the fuck were them people able to get out of New Orleans, bro? How did people get stuck there? And something was wrong with the system. You heard me? Yeah. So and there you go, man. There's another there's another experience for New Orleans people to sing about. The Katrina experience because we always you know, there's always something to talk about. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. So so that was our release. Music. One thing about New Orleans and that whole area, music is a release. You know what I'm saying? Just like just like um you know, you go all the way back to the hill, you Jackson, you go back to the way off. They knew how to really express themselves through the gifts of music. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. Because, I mean, Louis Armstrong, Coltrane, I mean, all of them, like, when I listen to them, I mean, you hear the horn talking. Whatever song it is, the horn talks. You know, they, they whether it's the voice or it's an instrument, it talks to you and you can, you can hear what they're trying to say, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, um, go ahead. You know what I'm saying? No, I'll say, go ahead. What you were saying. Now, go on, man. Okay. Go on, ask me about that. All right. No, the, um, now, one thing that I always look forward to, and I know everybody did, was the intros, like the soldier songs that were on, every, on a lot of the albums. Um, when were those completed? Were they done, like, at the beginning of an album? that you all knew how you want to do or was it toward the com- completion of an album and you're like okay let's let's make this happen like this well basically how we did it man um it would be, that would be part of the arrangement process okay um we had a formula okay everybody knew like you just said to look for, for a soldier song from certain albums yeah. you know what I'm saying and certain artists because they if, if they were if they participated on um no Limit Soldiers, which came from um, True, True to the Game album. Anybody who rapped on that song had their own version of No Limit Soldiers. Exactly. And so they would, they would, you know, start off with, you know, 
for that except for C. C didn't have a soldier intro. He had a real dramatized intro. It was Odell did that. You know what I'm saying? He, he made it real dark. You know what I'm saying? So that, that, that was him. You know, and, and that you know, was consistent with the album cover. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, uh, you know, the soldier songs, the other, you know, the people who were on the, the No Limit Soldier, the original one, they just, you know, just knew, okay, I'm going to have a soldier song. And uh, they got it done. I don't know if it was done. Because like I'm saying, a lot of those sessions, I wasn't at. You know what I'm saying? I ain't going to say a lot of them, but some of those sessions, because we, like I said again, we took shit. Okay. So, you know, sometimes I would say, I would say the whole no limit experience, I'll say seventy five percent of the time, B Spot of Time would be in there all collectively. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, but uh it, you know, but uh like I said, we were alternating and we, we were brothers, we were a band of brothers anyway, you know what I'm saying, outside the studio. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know, we met we met via other people. You know what I'm saying? We crossed paths via other people, you know, they connected the dots, but once we got connected and still to this day we're still a brotherhood that's cool man mm-hmm. what, what was your um, favorite album that you produced and what's your favorite track my favorite album I produced uh huh outside of Gangsta Harmony yeah I'm gonna have to say Gangsta Harmony because that was my that was my experience and that was my my, um, my expression you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, um, thanks to Harlem, my favorite because I poured my heart and soul into it. Yeah. And I was able to get everything off my chest that I was able to get off from that one album. You know, and everybody else, I'm going to have to say Ice Cream, man. I'm just going to have to say it. A lot, of people, a lot of people like that ghetto D. I'm going to have to say Ice Cream, man. Yeah. Because, you know, it was, it was, there was full of some, some nice gems on that, man. Yeah, like you can listen to every, you can listen through it to it straight through, like, and it's it's timeless. Like I said, timeless classics. Anytime any track from any song on that album comes on in the club, the whole club <laughs> is right there with it. You know. Mm-hmm. And not only that, man, you, you can still, you can hear the hunger in it, man. It was at the. Uh, it was at the early stages of No Limit, you know what I'm saying? When I when I came into the play, when B, when Beast by the Pound was formed, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Beast by, Beast by the Pound was formed on that album, you know what I'm saying? Um, and, and uh, you know, we we actually gave P his identity on that with our sound because prior to that, he was he was using work, you know other work for higher producers, you know that weren't actually in house. You know what I'm saying? We were in hard but actually we were still work for hire. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So where you know, he was actually um getting tracks from people, you know what I'm saying, like Al Eaton and um Ken Franklin and uh, DJ Dow prior to us. And with they they were producing other people. You understand what I'm saying? Like the E forties and the two shorts and all that. And you know, with that you know, you would pr- pretty much be sharing a sound. You wouldn't really have a, a true identity. Yeah. You understand? So when we came into the play, he had a sound that nobody else had in the industry. You understand what I'm saying? Nobody else had, nobody else had that, that New Orleans bounce. And, you know, and, and even to this day, you know, you know, a lot of people try to emulate it, but it, it's not like the original. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Rarely do, never duplicate the original. And I mean, that sound, <laughs> ever made everybody knows a no limit sound. I don't care, especially then, you knew it. Like from the drums, mm-hmm. the drums, the piano, I mean, all of that. And it was like, you could hear the instrumentation in it. It wasn't just generic sounds put in, you know, like how a lot of producers do. But the fact that you all, you know, you're, you're instrumentalists, you play instruments so you can put a sound together off of what you feel and what you put with your hands. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, so, um, yeah, that, that's what that was, man. You know, you, um, yeah, I would say uh, Ice Cream Man was my favorite, like you said, because of how we put it together. And it was at the, the earliest stages of it, we were still hungry, but you hear the hunger in that album. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, I, and after that album, stuff started getting better, <laughs> you know, economically with P. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you were like, okay, I can't talk about that. Like, uh, you, you know, he was still, you know, 
I don't get a B. He would still talk about the hood and all that, you know what I'm saying? But you could tell, you know, economically, he was advancing. Definitely. Funky, shout out to DJ Funk and ATL. You know what I'm saying? Me and him mess around, you know what I'm saying? So I got a, a joint on his uh, smoking as while we drive. Um, that came out, I think it was approximately 2011 or 2010, and a song I did called Get Your Jig Alone is on his album. So shout out to DJ Funk. Okay, cool, cool. I had to, I gotta ask you, man. Um, my favorite, uh, um, one of my favorite tracks is is that calling me from Mac, man. Just the instrumental. <laughs> you know, you probably seen me post it a hundred times. Um, oh man, I got a story behind this song, man. Man, thank you. Well, let's hear it, man, because that uh, man, just just talk about it. Well. First of all, that song was supposed to be on Gangsta Harmony. <laughs> really? <laughs> the beat. The beat. I'm going to say the song the beat. Okay? Yeah, because I know I heard it on the radio so we, um, on the radio commercial that you got on there, on, on your mm-hmm. album. Was, yeah. I'm like, there it go again. On there the it is again. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, man. Okay. We were working on a lot of projects simultaneously. That's how we were able to put out a lot of albums because... We were like working on about two or three albums at one time, bro. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we were working our ass off. You know what I'm saying? Beast by the pound. You know, we want to make a beast by the pound. Everybody know, man, in the way of the world, that shit would happen like that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Cause I know, top. That's the thing, like, I notice, you know, every time we get the albums and see the coming soon, coming soon, it'd be mm-hmm. like five albums left. We're like, when is this coming out? When is this coming yeah. out, man? <laughs> So man, anyway, we doing calling. I mean, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm doing a beat for calling me, and I had it going, man. And Mac was about to turn his album in the uh, the uh, uh, sell shop. Yeah. Okay. And um, he was like, "Cuz, I gotta have that song. Cuz, I gotta, I gotta have that beat. Cuz." <laughs> so that's what they called me. You know what I'm saying? Because P, P and C and uh. Would call me Cuz, that, that became my name. You know what I'm saying? He said, Cuz, I gotta have that beat, bro. I'm like, I'm about to put this on my album. He said, you see, Man, I gotta have that, bro. Come, bro. come on, let's do that for your boy, bro. You know what I'm saying? We, we had a brotherhood like that. You know what I'm saying? Matthew, one of my, like, my little brothers. Yeah. Him, Kane, and Abel, King. You know what I'm saying? Still to this day, they're like my little brother, man. Shout out to Matthew. I love him. He's about to get out. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So look, look, out, look out for that. We're about to tear the world up again. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, uh, so I say, man, you got that, man. You know what I'm saying? Your album about to come out first. And anyway, you know, your album is my album. You know what I'm yeah. saying? That's how it was. I know them because we were always featured on it. On, on each other's album. So I came up with the hook. You know what I'm saying? I came up with the hook, you know. You know, while the beat was playing, can I let the beat talk to me and it tells me, you know, what to do? Yeah. And uh, matter of fact, I did the beat. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, when I do the beat, you know, and let the beat ride, it was, you know, it just sit down and groove to it. You know what I'm saying? And the beat was like, had me talking, just calling me, just calling me. You know what I'm saying? That like that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, back on that, yeah, cuz, yeah, cuz. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, he, he did his thing. Go to it, and I, I got uh, Peaches to be like little moans and groans, the female moans and groans and all that. Yeah. Shout out to Miss Peaches. You know what I'm saying? And then, you know, but I was known for the nasty songs. So I was the nasty man on yeah. that. <laughs> I was the nasty man on the whole tank, you know? Yeah. And also, you know, Big Ed was the nasty man number two. Uh, that's a piece of Big Ed. And, and Mr. Atrocious himself was a uh, Rico of Sons of Funk. That's a nasty bastard. Yeah. I'm saying, shout out to Rico, the son of the son. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, uh, when we came up with that, you know what I'm saying? It was, it was like a Kodak moment. That, that was no limit. Was, that's what, a lot of those hits that we came up with, the Kodak moments, man. We caught those and captured those moments, that vibe, that energy, that content, and took a picture of it. We snapshot it in the music of You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. all, your, all your snapshots. You know, it's something you just can't, you know, do it. You can't practice that like talking about. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. Well, yeah, man, because I, I always wanted to know. I knew it was something with it. And then, you know, 
just reaffirming like when I heard it on your album, I'm like, yeah, man, that's it's tight. But now that I know it was your act, you actually intended for your album. <laughs> it, mm-hmm. made, it makes total sense, cause I said, man, I, I I I can't even count the number of times I've listened to that track since '98 on up. I mean, I'm good. That's yeah, man. That's it. So, talk about all the projects you're working on now, cause I know you you've released um, six albums, solo albums, solo projects. And um, mm-hmm. I had been, because I've been trying to find, I actually, uh, I remember when the Converted Excursion came out, 09, and I, mm-hmm. it, was on, it was on MySpace, I think, at the time. And mm-hmm. then, like, I have been trying to find it and couldn't find it, like, anywhere online. And, the Converted Excursion? Yeah. I, I've checked. The Converted Excursion is on iTunes now. Oh, it's Bigger. on iTunes, Okay. So yeah, you as a matter of fact it's on all um digital downloads. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, and, and you may be be spelling it wrong, it's it's it, it's uh perverted, you know, spelled correctly. Yeah. And then the expression is called triple X C U R S I O M S. Okay. Gotcha. And that that's a triple X, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But anyway, uh projects that I'm working on now, you know, we work on the Beast by the Pound project. If we wasn't on the beach by the pound, we'd be about to go on and finally put it out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Put out the beach by the pound. Not better for me, but beach by the pound. Okay. You know what I'm saying? The same guys. You know what I'm saying? Me, Kale, Craig B, and uh, Odell. Okay. You know, and if we're going to have some, it's going to be pretty interesting. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you can imagine, just imagine who you hear on that album. I know, I know, I know of course, people will say, like, a lot of the original. Uh, no limit members, no limit uh, artists, but uh, you know we're gonna have some other real nice juicy features on that. Well, with, with the world is definitely waiting on it. I can I can mm-hmm. assure you that. Um, mm-hmm. So with that being said, with that coming together, do you think it could ever be potential for a no limit reunion, like a, a tour, or whatever? Or? Will everybody come back together? Or? Oh, man, they've been trying to put together the tank reunion, you know what I'm saying? And um, that, that right there, bro, we're going to, uh, that's what remains to be seen. Yeah. I'm going to say it remains to be seen, you know. I say that it won't ever happen because, you know, of course, you know, tank reunions are always good, you know what I'm saying? You uh, know, I'm... I'm an advocate for unity and not separatism. You know what I'm saying? Right. You know, you know, me and my cousin, we, we, we may have had some differences in the business. You know what I'm saying? I haven't talked to him since 1999, but I still love him. You know what I'm saying? And it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes we just have to move on and go a separate paths. Right. You know what I'm saying? And some people just grow apart. You know what I'm saying? But... For the fans, man, um, I'm still campaigning. I'm just, just let it be said, no, no ridiculous campaigning for no limit reunion. Because it's for the fans, not for us, for the fans. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We, we, can, we can stay in separate hotels for all I care. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. For the fans, I think the fans deserve it. I really do think they deserve it. And I apologize. That yeah, really, I apologize. It's from, um, cause a lot of people do know about the story of the, of the breakup. Yeah. Starting with Beast by the Pound. You know what I'm saying? But I would like to apologize for the fans who we left hanging. You know what I'm saying? Everybody who bragged, who, who had their, you know, cause I heard, I've I heard stories from people who were living in that age who were in high school saying that they were, they made up gangs and stuff called No Limit and Cash Money and all that type of yeah. stuff. Like, wow, like that. You know what I'm saying? We had that type of impact. Yeah, we used to call ourselves youth, soldiers, man. We had fatigues and everything. You know, it was just how it was. I didn't know, man. So uh, I apologize for the fans, man, because uh, I know that you know they 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 really had a lot of a lot of confidence in. Them. You know what I'm saying? And you know we we're not going to you know take the blame because we, you know it take two to tango. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not going to go into the details, but you know what I'm saying? And a lot of stuff, you know, I'm going to talk about in the documentary. You know what I'm saying? So that, 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 that had to be paid for. 
and hopefully, you know, you know, we can do an exclusive on it. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Me and you. That's yep. Yep. So, you know what I'm saying? We can, you know, that's something else I'm going to talk to you all off the record about. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But that's another project that's coming out. You know, the Mind I Have Seen, like I said, is still coming out. The soundtrack is already out. I'm going to come out with a, a remastered uh, soundtrack when the actual uh, documentary comes out. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And um, also I got on deck MC Trap Nasty and the uh, Grady Bunch. MC Trap Nasty is my alter ego. And, um, you know, it's pretty much an animated type of situation. Pretty much just think of a... Uh, of a uh, fat album in the uh, Cosby Kids type of thing, but you know, the hood type though. Gotcha. Like, something about, yeah, and gotcha. we talk about, and we talk about some content in the, you know, awareness and, you know, healthy eating, you know what I'm saying? And, and um, you know, stuff that goes on in the hood and where we trying to go from the hood. That's you know something I'm about. Yeah. So basically, it's, it's, it's an awareness campaign, but also, Letting the people know, our people know that we understand, you know, we could do a lot better. You know what I'm saying? And that's, that's what, because from watching uh, the Cosby kids, Bill Cosby and the Cosby kids, shout out to my friend, but the Bill Cosby, he's innocent, you know what I'm saying? I don't fuck with nobody else talking about, right. you know what I'm saying? But anyway, uh, I think that there's a, 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 a need for a more mature version of that album than the Cosby kids, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And plus, you don't have boondocks anymore. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, don't, I, I think they did he just wasn't having a rerun. But I, I want, I, I want to put out a, uh, an animated thing that's coming from the southern perspective. Yeah. You understand? So that's what MC Trap Nasty and the, the Graded Bunch, which you know, going to feature, you know, some artists that's from uh, Atlanta and the surrounding areas and stuff like that. Because you know, that's where I'm at. You know what I'm saying? And I'm just showing love to where, where I lay my head at. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. just, so, you know, wherever I lay my head, I, I like to break bread with the, with the uh, indigenous people. Okay? So that that's all, all the projects that are coming out real soon. You know what I'm saying? Okay. You know what I'm saying? It, 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 uh, my latest project is called The Society. You know, that's, that came out last year on, on all... Uh, all... Um, is a download and I'm working on for the, the actual movie itself for that. It's an, that's another animated movie that I'm, I'm going to put out for the La Society project. Okay. okay. That's what, that what I got, bro. Well, that's great, man. I said it's, it's all it's all good, man. Like you said, God is good and, and you know, you're making things happen and, you know, the fact that the great things you've done before has set up the pathway for right now and you know the fact that your fan base like is still there you know when you do good things good things come to you and and people appreciate that forever you know and uh oh, yeah. that's you know like you said the fans and like we still we, we still feeling like you know y'all cooked it up we still here <laughs> we still want it we still mm -hmm. waiting man we got, we got stuff for you man um Shout out to Fiend, man. Shout out to all my tank dogs. Shout out to, um, you know, uh, Free C Murder, Free BG, Free Mac. Shout out to come on out there. You know, oh, also, I got I to gotta drop this little dude. Uh, you know, Mystical, you know, he made that move. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, he, and he's uh, working on some great things right now. So, uh, look for some more. He's about a pound production on the next mystical project. Oh, okay. So, so, so you know, that's going to be pretty interesting. And you know when Matt takes down, jumping out with his feet running, and he, he comes at home. And that's with the home team, so look, look out for that as well. And okay. That'll be great. So everybody can tell everybody where to follow you at on Instagram, Twitter. So Instagram, hey, Moby Dick, that's P A Y M O B D I C K. Uh, Twitter, same thing. P A Y M O B D I C K. I don't mess with Facebook; it's too messy. I don't do that. Yeah. Uh, you can catch me on Tumblr at the Real Moby Dick. I uh, know I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Catch me on Tumblr at Pay Moby Dick. All, all my social media is Pay Moby Dick. Okay. Okay, so I'm on Tumblr, Twitter, Instagram, and Pinterest. 
Yeah, and YouTube on my YouTube channel, it is uh, Mo Moby Dick Vision, and you can uh, search that on M O space B dot B I C K A V I S I O N. Yeah, yeah, you're listening to the sultry sounds of Moby Dick on your station.